All right, hallelujah. It's another day that we get to and turn the music on. It's another day that we get to glorify the Lord and lift up his name. Amen. We get to love oh, on a, love love people. We get to love on God. We get to to worship. We get to fellowship with his Holy Spirit. We get to um just seek his word and his his beauty, his peace, his Oh, we just get to love on Jesus. Amen. So lift up the Lord wherever you are. It's the perfect time to just look up in the great in the greatness of your heart and say, Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the life that is inside of me. I thank you for your faith on the faith to believe in you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. That is working inside of us, Lord. I thank you for fellowship, Lord God. I thank you that you are able. I heard him say in the spirit just now, and I wrote it. Hallelujah. Brother Munwar. 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 Um, hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, just bless his name. For the little things first. Show him that you're grateful for the little things, and then he'll give you the bigger things. All right? God gave me a word just now, and he said, um, ask them, or declare it. Do they believe that I am able in all things? Is there anything too hard for me to do? God said, ask them, or, tell, or declare it, that whatsoever people meant for evil, guess what? God already had the plan. Remember, I was telling you yesterday that um, Satan was envious of Adam and Eve in the garden, okay? Satan didn't want the fellowship, the beauty that God had with his creation to continue. That's why he went and he tempted Eve, because he wanted her to be kicked out of the garden. God says, where there is envy, there will be every kind of evil every kind he said um whatever satan meant for evil he will turn it around for good so today this is the word that is over our lives and i'm speaking it now even over mine whatsoever the devil had planned for you to destroy you to pull you down to make you less than god made you to be God is about to turn around that situation, and he's about to make you shine brighter than you ever thought you could. All right? God is saying, do you trust me? If you trust Jesus, I want you to say, yes, Lord Jesus, I trust you. Okay? Um, let me just get my, you know how I keep looking for my Facebook account, okay? I'm always losing my Facebook account on this thing. Um, this aside so this could be an open window like so and this one can be here hallelujah all right let's go into the word let's um try and finish up this <clears throat> is it recording is it is it no yes no yes all right let's try and go into the word and finish up this study um because it is a powerful one. It is something that's going to strengthen your spirit. It is going to make you draw closer to God. It is going to... Oh, come on. It is just going to do miraculous things in your life, okay? If you take the Bible and apply it to your life, it's going to do miraculous things. God is able. Why is Brother Anthony Joseph sending me messages right now? While I'm, oh, come on. Um, if any messages are to be sent, send them on the video, please. Um, so that it doesn't slow down the, it doesn't slow down the the recording. It doesn't, you know, it. You guys know what I deal with here. 
on a daily. <laughs> um, so I saw this thing, this clip on YouTube where the Pope is de declaring that, oh, he's, he's made it known, you know. He's talking. He's like, well, you know, the devil is a man and he has this and this trait and he's not to be, um, you have to fear the devil. And I don't know what and what and what he's been telling people, but he is speaking like he knows him personally. You know how we can say Jesus is um, beautiful and he's love and he's merciful and he's peace and he's every good thing. So the Pope is speaking about the devil like if he knows him just like we know Jesus. All right. So we we know that we're in this time. We I'm looking for um, the scriptures from yesterday. Just give me a second. I think we're almost there. We're almost done. Today it's my it would be my girl's eighth birthday, and um, God gave me a vision. You know, I don't know if this is how she's now or she's just playing in flowers. She likes flowers. She likes to make garlands for Jesus. So, um, she's beautiful. She's healthy. She's in a place where nothing can hurt her and harm her. Cause babies go to heaven, all right? Um, we'll see from tonight, tomorrow, stuff today is cool. I actually stumbled in my fast. Um, I told you the devil would rise up when I begin to fast. He always does. Stupid devil. He knows the power of prayer and fasting, all right? And um. He started to make my enemy stir up against me, you know? So, um, we're just going to declare that there's power in the blood of Jesus and just trample upon the, sea, the, sea, the snake's head. <laughs> the snake, the snake, the snake, the snake's head. All right, let me just find um, scripture. Where did we stop yesterday? The books were open and another book open and the court is seated. All right. So, yes, okay. Hallelujah. Wow. Look what comes immediately after. A white horse appeared in heaven with its rider. All right. So um, we are here. The books were opened and another book was opened. Let me find that thing. My stream. All right. Um, hallelujah. I just want to say a prayer for Brother Robbie right now, okay? I'm gonna, I just, he's heavy on my heart, and I'm just going to pray for him right now. So if you agree with me in prayer, that God is just going to touch him in a mighty way and just turn around his life, give him um, power to rise up in this hour where he feels alone. So Father God, we just come in your holy and precious name, Lord Jesus, and we just lift up Brother Robbie, Lord God. For whatever fear he has, Father, cast you away from him with your perfect love. We just pray that the spirit of a sound mind, power, and love will be given to him, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that healing is coming into his body, his mind, his spirit, and his soul right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Abba, Father, for your grace that is sufficient, Lord God, that your angels are encamped around him, keeping him, that a devourer can come near him, Lord Father. We thank you for his, his heart that Mrs. His grandmom, Father, that passed away. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is comforting him even right now. You said, "You said, blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted." Father, Father, where he is facing confusion in his life, where he is leaning in both directions, Father, by Satan trying to provoke him, telling him that he's not a man, telling him that he is. He is not able to do what you have called him to do, Father. We just pray for Brother Robert that you would, Holy Spirit, give him words of comfort. Install the words of your holy words in the Bible, Father, in his mind, in his spirit, in his soul, Father. Let him begin to walk in power, Father. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Father, we just plead your blood over this broadcast, Lord Jesus. We plead your blood over this environment father we plead your blood i know your blood is over me father thank you jesus we plead your blood over our listeners father um all our brothers and sisters that will join this broadcast that as you speak father cause me to speak do not let me add or take away from what you give 
unless it's my, it's your will, all right? So in yeah, Jesus' yeah, name. Hi, how are you? You good? Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Yep, time to give the word. If you want, you can come, yeah, yeah, when you're ready. All right, no problem. All right, bye. When? Which one? Who is just here? She just means well. She means well. She's coming from a lot of hurt. And she received Christ in prayer. She was hurt as a child. She was hurt as a woman. She was beaten and pushed into the road. She was kicked out of her home. She, she's going through a lot. And Jesus just working on her. So just love her. Yeah? Just go out there and say, Sister, God bless you. Yeah? So when you're ready, come and fellowship in the word, all right? All right. All right, God bless you. All right, let's go. And we're looking at this scripture. The books were open, and if I remember correctly, it was in Daniel. Daniel, right? Yeah, it was in Revelation 2012 and Daniel 7.10. Hallelujah, Father. I just bless your holy name, Father. I can't hear anything. Step down. There we go. Hallelujah. All right, so we're reading Daniel 7. We're reading from verse 9. We're reading the first scripture and the second scripture because we want to get it in context. We don't want to take it out of context, okay? Okay, so Holy Spirit, living God, let's go. From, from verse 9. I kept looking until thrones were set up, and the Ancient of Days took his seat, and his vesture was as white snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was ablaze with flames. Its wheels were a burning fire. Verse 10. And a river of fire was flowing and coming out from before him, because God is a consuming fire. Amen? Thousands upon thousands were attending him, and myriads, myriads upon myriads were standing before him, and the court sat, and the books were opened. And I kept looking because of the sound of the boastful words which the horn was speaking, and I kept looking at the beast until the beast was slain and its body was destroyed and given to the burning fire. And God says in his word that hell was prepared for whom? The devil and his angels, all right? So God is just telling me right now to, to tell you that just like how angels can take the form of humans and they do the will of God, okay? Satan's demons can also do that and they do the will of satan because satan is their master they're the father of lies he's just been cooking up lies since the beginning and he is bringing he's trying to bring everything into a destructive place that's what he wants okay the devil doesn't have your come on stop that okay the devil doesn't have our good our, how to say, our good. He doesn't want to bring good to us. He doesn't want to bring life to us. He wants to bring death to us, and he wants to bring hurt and pain to us. All right? So just like the angels, um, you know, like when an angel was sent to Balaam, when an angel was sent to Abraham, when the angel of the Lord came to Lot, many angels come, all right? And they... <coughs> Oh my gosh, this sounds ridiculous. The angels of the Lord appear like humans, even. 
you ever met someone who their countenance was just you feel a difference when they step in and you see there's just pure bliss on them there's pure power there you you can tell that that person does not have an ounce of darkness in them okay and on the other hand when another person steps in you can tell that evil is at work in them that they are their 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 aura gives out a sense of hatred a sense of darkness a sense of evil and you immediately start to pray this is happening to me at home because that same rasta guy who comes to afflict me he um every time he passes by now the holy spirit begins to utter tongues i begin to speak tongues in a powerful way and i know it's god leading me to pray against the demons that are working in him okay but um so god is saying that hey the courtroom was sat before the ancient of days and the books were opened all right so they said that the horn the little horn and who's the little horn the kingdom that rose up out of you know out of the the ah let's go straight into the bible right now to get where the little one came from the little horn rose up okay so why god is telling me about um angels taking the form of men why do you think because the little horn is a papacy yeah daniel 7 8 so we're looking at all these horns. They had ten horns, and the little horn came up from among them. Okay, the little horn is the, the little city of the Vatican that that has their own thing going. The ten horns on the beast is actually Europe, which is now what we know as. Hi, how are you? Hi, you alone there? Yeah. yeah okay you're good for now you're feeling good yeah no pain in your body no nah, no nah, i'm good i good come on that's all yeah awesome it's the med to work awesome. i'm a local medicine and i drink that and i feel good i don't take your medicine i refuse yeah? i refuse but okay. the the cat fur and stuff it it irritates yeah, him yeah yeah that's oh god no, it no. irritates him that's i can have people getting sick you know i know yes so yeah. well Pastor was here and he just left. So. Oh, he left because um, I was telling a young girl here. Good son, huh? Who? A biggish? No, a slim girl here. Come and watch her just not something like you. No, you could send her. She gone. Oh. Whenever she comes. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So, sorry about that. Um, all right, so in Daniel 7, 8, it tells us exactly who the little horn is, okay? And it says, remember... We're reading, the, God said in his spirit, he told me that the books were opened, okay? So this is what's happening. There is a court seated right now, even now, and the books are open. What books? The book of life and the book of death. The books of our lives, the books of our obedience and our disobedience. Now, God is saying, look in Daniel 7, 8, because Daniel's speaking now, he's speaking from a night vision. So he says, after this, I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrifying, extremely strong, and it had large iron teeth, and it devoured and crushed and trampled down the remainder with its feet, and it was different from all the other beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. That is the kingdom of Rome, okay? Now, you know that Rome is... um. The ten horns is divided Europe, okay? Um, in Daniel 7, 8, and we read, While I was contemplating the horns, behold, another horn, a little one, came up among them. The Vatican. Okay? Um, and three of the first horns were pulled down by the roots before it. And behold, this horn possessed eyes like the eyes of a man, and mouth 
uttering great boast. Now, the eyes of a man. Anybody think in poop here? If you're thinking poop, you're on the right. You're on the right track, okay? And he boasts about a lot of things. He boasts that he is Jesus Christ in the flesh. He said that only he. You have to come and pray to him to forgive sins. That. What God said in his word was not enough. He made a lot of boasts and blasphemes against God, all right? He's proud. This little born is not scared. It is exalted in itself. It's prideful. So we go on to read in Daniel 7, verse 8. While I was contemplating the horns, behold, another horn, a little one, came up among them, and three of the first horns were pulled out by the roots before it. And before this horn possessed, and behold, this, uh, this horn possessed eyes like the eyes of a man, and the mouth uttering great boast. I kept looking until thrones were set up, and the Ancient of Days took his seat, and his vesture was as white. Oh, this is before. <laughs> See how God, oh, hallelujah. See how he brings everything into line upon line, precept upon precept. So it goes back into what we were reading before. And I kept looking on the Okay, so we're reading Daniel 7, verse 9. I kept looking until thrones were set up, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His vesture was as white wool, and the hair on his head like pure wool. His vesture was as white snow, and the hair on his head were like pure wool. And his throne was ablaze with flames. His wheels were a burning fire, because God is a consuming fire of holiness. Remember the vision of Ezekiel? He's reminding me of the vision of Ezekiel. We'll go there just now. In Ezekiel 1, and we'll read it, okay? And a river of fire was flowing, and coming out from before him, thousands upon thousands were attending him. And myriads and myriads were standing before him, and the court sat, and the books were open. How many of us know that we have ministering spirits that are called at our beckon? That are they they're on they're they're there to serve us. Okay, they're there to um they're they're at our beckon. We are children of the most high God. God has given us servants even to serve us. You see how lucky we are? All of these servants are angels, okay? They are angels that they're there to do our bidding in Jesus Christ. Amen. And yeah, you could sit down and just yeah. So angel, no, angels are there to do our bidding. Okay, they are ministering spirits. So right now there is a courtroom, and there are angels in charge of angels, just like Lucifer was in charge of worship, and he was cast down. There are angels in charge of finances. So there are angels, and they, they put them down in that order for certain things. There are angels in charge of healing, so they'll put them in that order. Everything. God is a God of order, not confusion. Where's that scripture? Let's find it. Um, God is not a God of confusion, but a God of order. In 1 Corinthians 14... Verse 33, um, verse 33, okay, and God says, well, it is written, what is written, we're about to read it, <laughs> First Corinthians 14, verse 33, for God is not the author, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. So God is what? He's a God of order. But we have to read this, the first and the last verse, all right? So let's read from the first. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Did I just not tell you that the angels are ministering spirits? That for each assignment, there are generals of angels, and they have orders, and they have commands. So God is confirming his word that I just spoke. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 32 to 34. And the spirits of the prophets are subjected to the prophets. So the spirits of the prophets are ministering spirits, 
that are subjected to, this, to the, those who are prophesying to help. Because we are sons and daughters of the Most High. He has given us angels like servants to help us. All right? And it's not slavery or anything. God, they are proud to help God. They are, they are honorable. They are humble. All right? So receive this word right now. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 32 to 34. And these are the spirits of the prophets that are subject to the prophets. For God is not an altar of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the same, not some. I hope this is not loud. Is it loud? It's loud. So you can get some breeze there. I guess. Yeah? Okay. So, verse 34. Let your woman keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law. Who are the women that they're talking about in these churches? Shall we examine? They were in the city of Corinthian. Remember we did this study where the woman that would enter the church to speak was actually, well, prostitutes. I didn't want to say the other word, but prostitutes that they would rise up against what? The, the preacher was saying in the church to justify their um, their thing as a job, that they were selling their bodies as a job, and they said they should not speak. They're not allowed to come in the churches and speak. There is a new thing that God says he is doing in the earth, and it's not against female preachers, because God says, behold, I am doing a new thing. And he said it in Jeremiah 33, if I am not wrong. Um, and shall come to pass that a woman shall encompass a man. Because where men are called to preach, to stand up, to prophesy, to evangelize, to stand up as an apostle, to do the fivefold ministry, they're not doing it. They're going in bars. They're going after women. They're lusting. They're looking at pornography. They're... They're doing all sorts to their own liking when God is rising up that fire inside of women, okay? So, hmm, I don't know why he put that in there, but all right. We'll see in a while. And, um, hmm, well, I don't want to go preaching. This is not about me. But he's saying that he, Jesus Christ, didn't he say there is no longer Jew or Greek nor male or female? For all are one in Christ Jesus. Didn't he say in his word, in the resurrection, we are not given in marriage, but we are like angels. We are about Abba Father. That is what we are about. It is first. He's our father. We're about his business. First. Okay. So. God just wanted me to give that word. That's a beautiful word. Amen. Anybody blessed by it? I am. And listen. And he goes on to say in 1 Corinthians, verse 14, verse 35, um, chapter 14, verse 35, if they would learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in the churches. Because why? In the ideal order. This is how God gave it. Jesus is supposed to Jesus is supposed to be the head of the husband. And the husband is supposed to rule over the wife. So when the husband is stepping up in his power in the Lord to be strong, to rule his household, to provide for his household, to guide his household, to protect his household, the woman now, they're allowed to be gentle and kind and calm and nurturing and loving so they'll put a flower here and they'll decorate the, tr the the home and they'll beautify it or they'll clean up the house or they'll cook the lovely meals they're allowed to be women just quiet and calm because the husband is the head of the home and christ is the head of the husband i don't know why i'm speaking about this but okay <laughs> we're coming into it all right Oh, here we go. He's giving me revelation. Because just like Christ is head of the husband, and the husband 
is in charge of the woman. He says, woman. He said, what did he say about husband loving their wives? He said, husband, love your wives like, like Christ gave himself for the church. He's showing that the husband is Christ. Ah, I see where he's going. The husband is Christ, and he is leading the church. The church in prophecy is woman. That's why we said when Babylon was the adulterous harlot, she had daughters who are harlots. She have churches that are following in the wrong way. Okay? So now we're speaking about the papacy. We're speaking about the abominable church. We're speaking about the beast who is in prophecy, the kingdom that exalts itself above God. And we're reading about Rome, that is Europe, that is divided Rome, that is the ten horns, okay? And out of these ten horns rose one little horn. All right? Is it making sense now? God is about to bring it up in a mighty way. His Holy Spirit will reign. Amen? Yeah, I have freedom on my back. See it? Freedom in the name of Jesus. That's where freedom comes from. So, we're reading. Um, remember, the scripture that we're examining was the scripture. The books were open and the courts were seated. We are right here, right now. This is going to be powerful. And it is going to be end time prophecy coming to you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's read that again. And I kept looking until thrones were set up and the Ancient of Days took his seat. Who's the Ancient of Days? God Almighty, Yahweh Yeshua, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Um, his vesture was like white as snow because in God there is no darkness. He is light. He has no sin in him. And the hair of his head were like pure wool. His throne was ablaze with flames. Hallelujah. Remember, we have to read Ezekiel 1. All right? So we're going there just now. Its wheels were like a burning fire. And I hear wherever um, the wheels went, his presence is, okay? And a river of fire was flowing and coming out from before him. Where is he seated? On the throne of glory. What is God? A consuming fire of holiness so fire is coming out from his throne and we know that fire is also what it's water and wherever the water goes there is life all right so a fire is coming out from before him and thousands upon thousands were attending to him so when you think a king has 10 and 20 and 100 man thousands upon thousands are at the beckon of god it is written right there in Daniel 7. Okay, and that's why he, as we are sons and daughters of the Most High, we also have thousands and thousands of ministering spirits, of angels, of God, of Jesus Christ, to beg, to help us, to, uh, to assist us. Because why? Do you see this crown on my head? It's in my Father, Jesus Christ. Amen? Do you see that crown in your head? It's invisible. But it's there in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Because you are royalty. Never forget that you are royalty. He has a robe that is spotless and a crown. No man will take it from you. All right? And the books were open, the court sat. And I kept looking. Now, this is Daniel. He's looking and he's seeing this. Because of the sound of the boastful words which the little one was speaking. Remember who the little horn is? It's the papacy. It's the Vatican City in Rome. And Rome is divided Europe right now, okay? This is what we're looking at. And it was speaking, I kept looking, and the beast, until the beast was slain and its body was destroyed and Amen. given to the burning fire. Amen. Amen. And for the rest of the beast, their dominion was taken away. But an extension of life was granted to them for an appointed period of time. So listen, guess what they're going to say? Well, it happened. The papacy was pulled down. And the kingdoms of Europe was given a time. But God says that, okay, he's showing me the statue of Daniel now in the spirit. And he's showing me that it was made of gold and 
and um, gold and silver and iron and bronze and clay. The tools of clay is what we're looking at right now. We're looking at modern Europe. And this is the what we call the UN. You know, they, God said they would never join until he wanted them to join. And God is saying, hey, they tried to join. And you know how they tried to join? The UN. Bye. God bless you. You are blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now walk in power. Your, your tummy's full? Amen. All right, so I'll see you, all right? We'll do a Bible study, and we'll lift up the Lord in prayer and worship. All right? All right, bye. Bye, love you. Bye, love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah, she, she's come from a lot. She's come alone. So, um, where are we? Right, what was I saying? Right, so God was showing me the, the statue. And he showed me that one by one, the kingdoms they were kingdoms okay and they were taken down and now we're looking at and i want an ice cream i don't know no i leave in this bag here coming back oh my gosh it's three o'clock that's why good evening evening so he was showing me the the tools of clay that are divided they're broken off god says they will never unite until he wants them to unite now, if we look at where Obama, why am I saying Obama? Just hand her a, a no. paper towel, okay? Yeah. I want them. Mm -hmm. All right. So God is is saying that Obama. God is saying that Obama. I don't know why he's bringing up Obama now. Okay, but we know, we know, we know what Obama is doing, right? So he is actually being set up to go to these divided tools let's just call them divided tools because they are divided room your brother loves you you know he doesn't understand you but he loves you Stefan, this is sarah sarah this is Stefan. this is your sister in the lord this is your brother in the lord okay you just have to be baptized and hold spirit healing yeah and you will unite together and you will sit here even and we will do a Bible study together. We'll worship together. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. So um Stefan and Sarah is here, so I was just talking to them. But um no sir, I'm doing uh unless you want to sit down and listen. Yeah? All right. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna sit on the crate and get by the chair? All right, all right. So we have two people with us here right now, and um, so God was showing me Obama going to the UN as a sign of rebellion. All right, He knows that the tolls are divided Europe. He knows, and He knows that the UN is their attempt at joining together to rebel against who? Against God, because God says. They will not join. All right. I'm not speaking this out of my own. I'm speaking this out of scripture. Let's go to scripture. The toes of clay, okay? The toes of iron and clay. And Daniel 2 3. And he, Daniel's looking at the statue and he said, The head of that statue was made of fine gold, and its breast and its arms silver, and its belly and its thigh bronze, and the legs of iron, and its feet partly of iron and the partly of clay. clay. So it's all the di all the divided um uh oh, come on so, country, no. It's Media Persia, it's Rome, it's you know, it's it's all, all there. Yeah. It's all there. And God is showing me that the divided tools of clay and iron is divided Europe. And it's where the UN guess what? It came together. The United Nations. And you're doing all sorts right now to join nations together. And it's all in an attempt to rebel against who? Against God. So there's something called the Schengen States. That people who have certain passports can go to Schengen States because they've united. And it's not they're now able to go without visas, okay? So all these attempts at joining the states, joining all the countries is... Uh, a bold statement in God's face saying, you didn't want us.
to join. But we're going to show you that we could join. It's like a cry out before God. That's why you see things are happening in Europe. And they're wondering why. They say gayness is not an abomination in God's sight. And God said that gayness is an abomination. So when you saw that 500 gay protesters just caught fire. They caught fire. 500 of them in this whole thing. They're partying. And all of a sudden you see them burning up like if it's a whole biblical scene of Sodom and Gomorrah where men went into men. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Come on, do your research and you're going to see. They were holding a gay parade. And I don't know what kind of paint they use on their bodies, but that thing caught fire and suddenly it's like a biblical thing happening where the fire of the Lord came down and they were burning. This happened in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, or 2016. No further. This was recently. We are in the last days. God is showing us that the books in heaven are open. open. It's open. And the Ancient of Days is God Almighty. And he's seated on the throne of glory. And now he's judging. He said, hmm, I told Noah to build the ark. I told Noah to believe me, and Noah believed me, and he built the ark. And I told him to get the animals in, and get all who would come in, because I'm bringing my judgment upon this earth, because evil is upon this earth. And did he listen? He didn't listen. Noah and the animals alone with his family entered the ark. And guess what? He said, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, seven days. He shut the ark. No one, his family was sealed in the ark. And it didn't rain. And people laughed. And they said, oh, you stupid boatman preacher. You've been preaching the Lord is coming for how many years? 120 years. Noah was preaching the same thing. The Lord's judgment is coming. But they never believed him. Until guess what? God said, Noah. I'm going to bring the floods upon the earth. My judgment is going to come now. I'm going to bring my, the floods upon the earth. And for 40 days and 40 nights, it's going to rain endlessly. And it did, didn't it? And yeah. what happened? Not flood. Only those who were in the ark was sealed, saved. was sealed and saved. God is saying, I gave my cross on Calvary. I gave my son Jesus. I came as the son of God. I died for you. My blood covers you. My blood was shed for you. Not just Christians, but every nation of this earth. For the world. Repeat after me. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That is John 3.16. Now we know that verse, but do we know what the verse says after it? No. Well, let's read what the verse says after it. Okay? Because Jesus said, I came to bring a fire on the earth. And how I wish it was already kindled. What is kindled? Kindled means to out down. To, um, to, to start up. Well, when you say kindle a fire, it means to, to start it up. You want to bring that fire. Because he, the fire he's talking about is two. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. That he didn't die yet. He didn't go on the cross yet. He didn't resurrect yet. So that the comforter was just the Holy Spirit could come. Mm -hmm. So he wanted the fire to be kindled, the fire of truth, the fire of revival, the fire of refinement. He wanted the fire of his Holy Spirit to come. And also the fire of judgment, because that is coming as well to destroy evil. When the truth comes, lies fall. Amen? Mm -hmm. When light comes, darkness goes. Amen? Amen. Steph and I here, and you, boy. <laughs> You're just quiet. And you love your brother. Yeah. Right. You know how she loves you. All right. So let's read after John 3.16, mm -hmm. which is for God to love the world. 
And it says in verse 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Okay? And God says in verse 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten what? Son. Son of God. God. Amen. So you see, there's two ways to that. He who believes is saved. But he do not believe, he who, who does not believe is what? Is condemned. Them. Yeah. And um, this is the condemnation. And the Bible begins to say in verse 19 of 3, John 3. This is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, right. because their deeds were evil. evil. And evil likes to hide. Right. If they come into the light, they'll see. But evil likes darkness. Yes. And he says in John 3.20, For everyone that does evil hates the light, right. and neither comes into the light, that his deeds should be reproved. Mm. Okay, so that's why we have courts and we have judges and we have juries because there is lies and people they do their evil and there's Which something is. called justice where justice must be served. All right, mm -hmm. and God is saying whatever was done in evil, I know, I'm I can see everything in the dark, in the light. Whether they hide it, they don't hide it. I see everything. So he's saying right now, the judges, the books are open. Mm -hmm. He said in the spirit, mini mini takil, a person. It means the scales are weighed and they are found in wanting. The blood of Jesus was poured out for the world. But who didn't receive it now? Judgment is upon the world. Whoa. Whatever they serve, that is their master. master. And he said you should have how many masters? One, one master, and he shall be God. Jesus Christ, right. God Almighty. Amen. Amen. And he said, "Those whom you obey, they, they are your they are masters." masters. Stephanie, you agree? Yes. You agree? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so he must sleepy. Yeah, he just relaxed. Yeah. You relaxed? Relax. You good? You fast him today? You want some water? Thank you. Yeah. I did I do that? Pepper sauce and, and fruits. <laughs> That's chow. That's preservative chow right there, eh? Did I bring a fruit? I think I'm supposed to bring a fruit to eat. Oh. Well, did I give God sister to bring a fruit to you? Buy a fruit to you? Huh? You want me to go and buy a food for you and come back? No, it's okay. Um, if I have food in front of me, I will be tempted to eat. No, fruit. But fruit. I don't want to eat anything right now. I just want to feed on the root. But um, when I'm ready to eat, I will. Water of life. Nah. Same here. It is now 3.17. Okay. Yep, 317. So God is saying in his word that they're trying to join the tools, right? And remember, this is Europe. It's all the countries of Europe. The ten, the, the ten, you know the United, you the yeah, United yeah, Nations. Yeah. And it's all an attempt it has some for rebellion. Babylon. Whatever. Media Persia, yeah. Rome, yeah. It Greece. Um, um Jamaica. No, no, no. <laughs> You're going at a whole other thing there. Just listen. We're going into yeah. prophecy. Listen. So God is saying, they're doing this in a rebellion to me. Okay? And what are they coming together to do? Guess what? Obama is there in the UN. And he's trying to get his agenda pushed. His agenda is he wants to do everything abominable in God's sight. He wants to bring it to the world. Just like how he snapped his fingers and in 52 states in the United States what gay marriage is now allowed mm. a man could go to man a woman could go to woman he slapped god in his face he repeat he repeated that rebellious thing we will we will rebuild 
You can pull us down, but we will be we will rebuild. We will rebuild. Okay? Jesus said, These signs shall follow. Um, these signs shall come before the coming of the Son of Man. There will be earthquakes in diverse places and famines and pestilence. Man, look at Europe. Europe is being shaken right now. If you look at the Philippines, the Philippines, the ground is melting on the houses. It's being swept away. There's no ground to stand on. And I have this thing that I see. Do not wait for the ground to be removed under you before you look for the firm foundation that is Jesus Christ. Okay? Judgment is upon the earth because the books are open and the accuser of the brethren who is Satan. You okay, Stefan? You have a pain? Yeah. You have a pain? Uh, you want me to pray for you? Yeah. You want to pray for you? Yeah. You sure? You're good? Yeah. All right. You sure? No pain? Thank yeah, God. All right. Yeah. Good. In Jesus' name. So, um, right. What was I saying? <laughs> what was I saying? Where was I? Okay, right. So, Jesus, um, this is why judgment is on the earth. The books are open. Okay, the Bible says, Worthy is the lion Man. of the tribe of Judah who has conquered victoriously and he is able to loose the seals and open the scrolls. And scrolls are open. I will never forget this. In 2012, I had a vision and God gave me a scroll. I could not, it was in another language. It looked like if I was by. Um, the desert in a cave with a whole set of broken pottery and then the spirit he told me take a scroll and I dipped my hand into the pottery and I took it and I was reading it like this and it was in another language and he was translating it for me and I was just like you know when something's rolled up like yeah yeah like when something's um roll up roll up like it's rolled up like that and it just keeps opening mm. back and then you have to open it back again, so it keeps rolling up like that. Mm -hmm. So that's what the sorry, that's what the um, that's what the the scrolls was doing. And I was reading, and he was saying judgment. Okay, I I didn't um, I wasn't ordained yet for ministry. I was ordained in 2015. All right, like officially ordained, but rebaptized then and committed to ministry and God was showing me that judgment is upon the earth because the accuser of the brethren who is Jesus. Satan huh? not Jesus Satan <laughs> okay the accuser of the uh, brethren he dwells in the dark because mm -hmm. sin is in the dark. dark and Jesus is the light and he's the light of the world so when he came the darkness had uh, to open. go it had to go, go. Okay, so Satan is dwelling in the dark, and all the nations that are hiding in darkness, what does this mean? All the nations that are dwelling in sin, doing abominable things in God's sight, judgment is upon this planet. Okay? Um, there are, are still good people in these countries. I'm not saying no, but they are few. God will not destroy. He will not make a complete end because his righteous people are still in this place. Remember, Abraham pleaded to God and he said, would you destroy 50 righteous people? Um, would you destroy in your anger this whole city and destroy 50 righteous people in it? What about 40? What about 30? What about 20? What about 10? What about 5, God? If there are five good people in this place, would you bring destruction upon all of them? Mm. God is not going to do that. He's a just and a righteous God. God. Okay? He loves each one of us like if we were the only one created. Elevation Worship sends me something. Oh, they send me. Do it. What? I'll do it again. Okay. <laughs> um, they send me that song. All right, hallelujah. Um, so um, God is saying the books are open and Satan is coming to the throne. And as evil 
is being done, unrighteousness is kicked out, holiness is kicked out. God is saying, Satan is coming to the throne, and he is saying, hey, this one committed this. This one did that. This one did this. And I want their souls. Because the blood of Jesus, Jesus was poured out on Calvary's cross. And if they did not receive it, then they are found in wanting. All right? It is not a good situation what is happening to this earth, I tell you. Um, um, let me get back to my scripture, okay? <laughs> let me not get carried away. Okay, so the books were opened, and another book was opened. And this other book, what was the other book? One is judgment, but the other one, another book was opened. This is the book of life. This is the book Who that, shall not see death? Do you hear an honest spirit? Yeah. Who shall not see death? That, yeah. Amen. My turn, Father, I was to say that. Right. Some shall see death and some shall not see death. Right. Because that is, what, a, that is what God he said. Is a that is what born Jesus Christian. said. John. That is what Jesus said in his word. He said, there are some here, standing here, that will not see death, death. until he comes. Yeah? So, God is saying in his word that there is a book written from before this world was even created. Mm -hmm. Because God is God. He knows, he knows everything, everything from beginning Link to, to the end. end. He knows in between. He knows everything. everything. Every little plan that they have made, he knows. He knows our life from start to finish. He said, before I w you were in the womb, I knew you. He knew you. He had a plan for you before you were in yeah, your, your mother's, mother's womb. womb. I want you to take that in right now because this is very crucial what I'm about to say. Before you were in, in your, your mother's, mother's womb, womb, God knew womb. you. Say it. Say, God knew me. God knew me. Say it. You're going to receive a blessing. Say, God knew me. God knew me. God had a purpose for me. God had a purpose. For and me. a plan for me. And a plan for me. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, God had a purpose and a plan, yeah. and he wrote it in his book, okay? So there's the book of life and the book of the Lamb, all right? And in the book of the Lamb, everyone that he knew would receive him is written, and that's the book that is written, because the other book is the book of judgment, because God is a just God. He cannot turn a blind eye to sin. Mm -hmm. He has to deal with it. And now Satan is coming up before the throne. He's the accuser of the oh, brethren. brethren. And he wants us to perish with him. So that's why God is saying repent. We are doing a study on the days of old. Really? The days of oh. all. The days of all is what? The day of atonement. The one moment he went on Calvary and he died for us. And each year, once a year, we celebrate that as the Day of Atonement. But the Holy Spirit is leading us into 10 days of fasting. Okay. Right now we're fasting for 10 days. Okay. For seven hours a day, no food, no water. We're just going into the Word. We're letting His Holy Spirit lead. And He's filling us up. Yeah? So, Holy Spirit, yesterday was our first day. Mm -hmm. If you want, you could start it, yeah? Yeah. Yesterday was our first day and today is our second day amen? amen and it's all about knowing jesus it's all about submitting to amen. him surrendering to him <laughs> <laughs> it's all he's looking at you in love oh your brother loves you it's all about surrendering to him it's all about loving on the lord and yielding to his holy spirit yielding to his word yielding to his truth because his word says sanctify them by my mm -hmm. by your truth mm -hmm. sanctify them mm -hmm. amen. amen we are in the hour of refining mm -hmm. fire fire is mm -hmm. upon mm -hmm. the earth through the holy, holy spirit. spirit there is coming a day where god himself jesus christ is going to show up in the clouds of glory and he wants us to be ready for that day because he is a consuming fire of holiness. 
But I do believe he's coming as savior of the world. He's gonna he's gonna be exalted, he's gonna be crowned, mm -hmm. but not until the great tribulation is he gonna announce himself as a consuming fire. But we know him. We know him. He is savior of the world and he is God Almighty. That's why you see when you know your father, I see the glory of God coming upon you. Ay ay ay. I see you're beginning to shine. Um, hallelujah. All right, so God is saying, I know you. I've known you. Satan tried to hurt you when they put you in this life. When you came into this life, you know that. Yeah. Satan tried to hurt I you. I'm going through plenty. Exactly, because God has a plan and a purpose for you. Just like me. Sometimes I wanted to kill myself. And yeah, exactly. We come to that point of not wanting to and live I so because that good. spirit of suicide is it's from devil. the pit of hell. hell. All right? Satan wants you out of this life so you cannot fulfill your purpose that God has called you to. Mm -hmm. But remember all you've gone through. Remember I told you? Remember what Have I told faith. you? Have faith. And God is bringing you to use you as a healed helper. helper. So what you went through, you're going to be ministering yes. to others what they went through. What they're going through, you've already come through. And you know Jesus <laughs> is your rock and your stronghold. So you're going to be able to minister to them. Don't worry. He's going to do a good work. He who started the work in you is faithful to complete it. Let me give you that word. I'm getting a word for Sister Sarah right now. So I'm just going to give it to her, okay? Hi, Chan. I didn't see you. I'm good. How are you? Thanks for the power. God's going to bless you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Philippians 1, 6. And this is your promise. And this is my promise. And Stefan, this is your promise. Are you ready? Yeah. And beloved, this is your promise. Whatever you've been going through in your life, God wants you to know that he knew you from the very foundations of time. Okay? He knows yeah. you. Jesus Christ knows you and he brought you forth as a gift into this world. No matter what happened into your life, you might have been rejected by your parents like me. You might have been raped. You might have been molested. You might have been stolen from. You might have been beaten. You might have been persecuted. You might have been hated. Whatever they did to you, God knew the plan he had for you. He knew you from before you were in your mommy's womb. Because your spirit that's inside is the breath of life. Okay? It's the breath of life and it's that him. That's him. That's a part of him. And God is not evil. That's why whoever does not receive him and whoever chooses that eternal spirit to be evil, there's an eternal place for evil. And it's what? Hell. Hell. That's right. So let's read God's promise right here. My beloved, this is for you too. Okay? For all the world. I'm reading this for every nation right now. Philippians 1, 6. We're reading from verse 5 because we don't want to take it out of context. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. He's saying the first day. He doesn't want you to know that it's not the first day that you knew Jesus, but it's the first day that he knew you. And when did he know you? When you were in your mommy's womb? No. No, before, before it. it. <laughs> so the very first day he called you. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. now. Until he comes. Until we go to heaven. Okay? For I am confident of this. That he who begun a good work in you will continue to perfect it. Until the day of Christ Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Did yeah. you feel that? Yeah. Yeah? The, the Holy Spirit is here. Hallelujah. And verse 7, he says, It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. This way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. heart. 
For in my chains and in my defense, in my confirmation of the gospel, you and you and you and you are all partners in grace with me. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. We're not saved by works, but grace through faith. Least any man should boast. Amen. Amen. I that one. Amen. And God is telling me, you know how he just said, now, in Hebrews 11, what's the first word? Now, faith is the substance of things, okay? Now, faith. So the very day God called you forth, okay, somebody received this. It is 333. It is, it is, right now it's alignment time. Ah, God says, now faith, the very day he made you, God beautifully formed you in his image and likeness. He knew that you would come to this hour of faith. And that's why he's delaying coming right now. He wants, there are many others to come, but the hour is late. That's why he's doing this work, this refining fire. Is calling for a day of repentance. Days of awe is what we're calling it. Because when we say you're in awe, you're in amazement of him. You can't believe he's this good. You can't believe you made it. However many years you are in your life, you cannot believe that you got this far. And God is calling us into repentance. Turn away from sin. Restitution. To do as much as you could do to appease those you've hurt. Recompense. Yeah? He wants you to turn back to goodness. Come on. Reconciliation to Him as God Almighty. See that? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. God is beautiful. And God is good. Amen? Amen. Is somebody being touched right now by the Word of God? Amen. Amen. Okay. And then... The court is seated. So right now, there's a judgment thing happening here in the earth. If you take the H and you put it in front of the E, you get heart. You don't get earth anymore. You get heart. heart. God made the earth with his heart. He loves the earth. He made it. Every beautiful thing. God said it was very good. I made everything for my good pleasure. But guess what? Now people are destroying the earth. Look what they're doing. They're destroying the ground. They're destroying the trees. They're destroying the seas. They're killing the animals. They're destroying the earth. And even the earth has begun to cry out against the sinners now. And so the people are too. Even the earth is beginning to cry out. Lord, help us. Because the earth knows the creator. And even the forest will sing his praises. And even the waters, they bow down at the shores and they do not cross it. You see how beautiful that is? The sun will come out when he calls it to come. And the moon will turn to red when yeah. he commands it to turn to red. The winds and the waves, they know him. Okay, beloved? He says, and the other part of this is the court is seated. And right now, Satan is before the throne. He goes, every time a person sins, he gets permission to go before God's throne. And this is the bad news. Because this is why we're always, daily, supposed to be eating the bread of life and drinking the water of life, which is Jesus Christ. Hi, Auntie! All right. So, hallelujah. He, um, that's Sister Christine. She's such a lovely soul. Um, she's coming to come in the Lord stronger every day. All right? So God is saying that as Satan approaches the throne, um, confident that he can take a sinner to a sinner's soul to hell, he said he's crying out in his Holy Spirit. He's crying out to us. That's why we're coming into these days of fasting and praying, to come into repentance and turn from wickedness. And when we begin to plead the blood of Jesus and the power in the blood of Jesus, what happens? Satan is cast down. He said at the point of Calvary, yeah? He said, now, 
The prince of this world is cast out. Oh. Satan is the prince of this world. He's ruling all systems, all evil. And he is cast out where? At the cross of Calvary. What are we doing a study on? The days of all. Oh. That point on the cross oh. that God defeated hell. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll come, I'll come. Right. He said he defeated okay. Satan, hell, and the grave in Jesus' name. And when you begin to plead the blood of Jesus, something happens. If Satan was standing before the throne, Satan gets kicked out of heaven. He cannot stand there and accuse you. That's why the Bible says, and I hear it in the Spirit, There is therefore no condemnation. Come on, tell somebody. There is therefore no condemnation to them who believe. The minute you plead the blood of Jesus, Jesus comes and he says, Devil, get out. I want you today to tell the devil who wants to come into your life, come into your home, come into your marriage, come into your kids, come into your job, anything in your business, anything in your spirit. I want you to get mad right now. Get angry. Close your eyes and get angry. And say, Satan, Satan. you the devil, you, you the, devil. the accuser of the you brethren, I command you to take yeah. your hands off of yeah. me and my life and my yeah. prosperity. In the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Ah, declare it. Declare it with power. Declare it with fire. Declare, I declare right now. Speak your name. Speak your name. Say, I carry. No, you say your name. I carry. I fear. Declare right now that the blood of Jesus is victorious for me. Hallelujah. Now, not just are you at the cross, remember we did this? But right now, as you truly repent, all right, this is what's happening. Jesus is not in a temple made by hands of man. He is in the temple of God. God made this temple. This temple is made with bricks. This temple is made with jewels. When you enter into this temple, it's light everywhere, wow. beauty everywhere. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's beyond description. I've seen it. I've seen it. He put me to stand next to two pillars in the temple. One man, one of the pillars is a ma I've never seen a pillar this massive going up into eternity. Massive, and he put me there to stand because I said, I'm in your temple, I'm here to worship you forever. And he showed me as a pillar, massive. I'm like an ant in front of this thing. And he showed me a massive thing going up as far as your eye cannot see. Okay? So God is saying, God is not in on the cross anymore, He's not in the grave anymore. He is on his throne in his temple Temples. and as you as you respond to his blood that was poured out at that one moment the days of all let this sink into you this is your day of repentance your blood his blood is washing off all your sins every wrong thing that you've done and come continue to do the moment you sincerely repent. He is faithful and just. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Amen. in the court, Jesus stands before Satan and says, Devil, get the head. Get out. That's exactly what he says. Get out. You have no place. You have no portion. This is a child of mine. And what you speak of? It might have been written up like this. 
I want you to do this. Holy Spirit instruction. If you believe the Holy Spirit of living God. All right. Whenever you have time, do it. Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you to do it. This was your life. Even you out there, you guys, can you see it? It was completely written up with all your sins, all your iniquities. This was your life and my life. And then the blood of Jesus came. Amen? Amen. And guess what happened in the courtroom? This is now your life. Can you see it? Yeah. Can you see what's there? What's Please. there? Please. It's nothing. So this was your life. It was written up with every accusation of every wrong thing. If you were a drinker, it was written up in the book. If you were on drugs, it was written up. If you were a fornicator, it was written up. If you disobeyed your parents, it was written up. And Satan's there like, oh, I'm coming with all my accusations. And he's all proud. He's all proud. And he comes and he presents it before the court. And then us, we're here now. And we decide to repent. And we decide to cry out at the cross. And guess what? The blood of Jesus washes us. The Bible says, purge us with hyssop. And wash us. And we will be what? White, White as snow. snow. So now Satan came in the court. And now Jesus said, guess what? Let me see your accusations. He tears it up. And he throws it into fire. He says, that's where sin belongs. And my child, you and you and you and me. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This is now our portion. The Bible says, he who was without sin became righteousness for us. That in him. Do you see that? Nothing there. That in him and through him, we are the righteousness of God. So you are slate clean. God knows your heart. He knows the intentions of your what? Mind. Of your thoughts, of your mind. And he is doing that work right now upon us with the power of his Holy Spirit. So even as there is a courtroom, we have an advocate, mm -hmm. and his name is Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And this is in 1 John 2.1. And this is what the Bible says. My children, my little children, I'm writing these things to you that you will not sin. But if anyone does not sin... We have an advocate, which is a lawyer, before the father, who is the judge. Okay? So he chose to operate like a son before the father. So now he's choosing to operate as a lawyer before the judge. See how God is? So smart. So powerful. And he is, Jesus Christ, Christ the righteous, righteous one. one. He himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours alone, but the sins for the whole world. The whole world. Hallelujah. Now she's beginning to minister. Ah, do you see that? He is doing a work in you because he is faithful to complete it. Amen? Amen. All right. So where are we now? Okay. He said, don't you know that the saints shall judge? Who are the saints? Once you are under the blood of Christ, Holy Spirit filled and walking in the path that he leads you, you are a saint of the Most High God. Let me find it. A saint shall judge angels. Imagine this. We have, we have the power to judge angels. When we walk in righteousness in Christ. I'm not making this up. It is in 1 Corinthians 6, 2 to 3. Okay? Okay, listen and then take it in. Just let your spirit absorb it in. Okay? Um, in 1 Corinthians 6, and we'll read from verse 1. Because 
We read the word, word before and after to get it in context, okay? And it says, if any one of you has a grievance against one another, how dare he go to law before the unrighteous instead of before the saints? He said, you don't go and accuse before the judge if you yourself have unconfessed sin. The blood of Jesus must wash it away. That when you come before the judge, you're clean. Okay? So he's saying, um, God loves us even. Even before you come in prayer, go to the throne of grace and say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me for hurting this one. Forgive me for hurting that one. And go to your brethren if you can. It's the one you hurt and you know you wrongly hurt. And ask them for forgiveness. If they don't forgive, that's okay. That's okay. You did your part. And God forgave you. Okay? So God says, If any of you have a grievance against another, how dare he go to the law before the unrighteous instead of the saints? Do you see how this is adding up? We are where right now? We're in the courtroom of heaven. That's what we're studying for the day of one, one moment, that day of the cross. Okay? The day of atonement. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? See, God said it in his word. And if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial cases? Hello, those who walk in the righteousness of the word, filled by the Holy Spirit, being led by Jesus Christ himself, who is the healer of the Holy Spirit. You are able to judge the world. You are able to judge those cases between you and know what is wrong and know what is right. Okay? Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more the things of this life. God begins to, he begins to, um, minister. what's that word? Yeah, he begins to minister his word to us. He begins to confirm his word to us. Hallelujah. And he says, this is the portion of the wicked. As sheep that were wicked that came not to their shepherd, they are appointed for Sheol, and death shall be their shepherd, in Psalms 49, 14. And the upright shall rule over them in the morning, and their form shall be for Sheol to consume, so that they have no habitation. It is for wickedness. Okay? But the saints, Daniel 7, 18, and we read, But the saints of the highest one, will receive the kingdoms, the kingdom, and possess the kingdom of heaven forever and ever and all ages to come. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Wow. Somebody is being blessed. I'm being blessed. Hallelujah. Somebody's being blessed. Me. Me too. Amen. Guess what comes after the judgment? Yes. People are expecting Jesus to come first and then the judgment. Guess what comes after the judgment? Line upon line, precept upon precept. precept. And I heard in the spirit where he said, There appeared a white horse in heaven with its rider. And he who sat upon it is called faithful and true. Let's go to that scripture in the Bible. There appeared... Horse and its rider. Okay. In Revelations, there are two horses. Now, the Antichrist. He also comes in a horse, but his horse, it ain't clean, mm. it's black. No, his horse is white to fool the people, but his horse rail dirty in the fact that it's not washed, it's evil. So he comes, the Antichrist comes, okay? Let's read where the Bible leads first. In Revelation 6, 8, we're reading from verse 7. And when the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the fourth living creature say, Come. And I looked, and a pale horse, well, he's not white, he's pale. He appears almost white. He is cream. Almost white, almost looking like the real thing. 
the Antichrist right? looks. <laughs> right? He almost looks like the real thing. Yeah. Your teeth is white. Shocks. Her teeth and my teeth. Your blood is red. My blood. Your blood. Her blood. All right. Okay. So. Right. <laughs> Revelation. And white tell us. Revelation seven. And this is what the Bible says. When the Lamb opened the fourth seal. I go take a picture. Let me take a picture. Amen. Revelation says in verse 6. Just a second. I have to take a picture. A brother and a sister who did not accept each other is now embracing in the Lord. Just a second. And they're studying with me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray for each other. Pray for each other. Go ahead. Pray for each other. Pray for each other right now in Jesus' name. Father, bless them. Bless them, Lord God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Bless them, Father. Bless, bless their going out and their coming in. We ask, Lord God, that they would fellowship in the word, Lord God. That they would fellowship in the word. As Sarah, Lord God, receives healing. And Stephen, Lord God, receives healing. Yes, Lord. That they, you said, where two and three are gathered in their name, in your name, Lord God. You are in the midst of us. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory. You guys should see this. I'm going to show you guys this. They are, <laughs> they are praying for each other. And they could not stand each other. The word is uniting even in here right now. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, wow, guys. Oh, wow. See, his Holy Spirit is very much present. And he's showing who's fake and who's real. So he's saying, okay, in Revelation 6, he said, I looked and I saw a pale horse. Now this thing looks white because it's a dark hour. Right now, evil is rampant on the earth. This one killing this one, that one raping that one, this one killing babies, children, a force, you name it, they're killing. And now this writer comes and says, I bring peace. But he's not Christ. He's the Antichrist. So the Bible says in Revelation 6, and it says, I, well, Revelation 6 verse 8, and I looked and I saw a pale horse, and its rider's name was Death. And Jesus says, Life. Right. So this writer's name is death, death, and Hades followed close behind because those who who sinned and did not repent, death is coming upon them. Then. And now Hades is hell. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and they were given authority over the fourth of the earth to kill by the sword of the famine. <laughs> Ah, it's gonna cut. It's gonna cut. Yeah. Okay, wait, 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 wait. All right. Oh, she's gonna cut it. Just a second, okay? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna cut it now, and I'm gonna come back in two seconds. We're stopping in Revelation six, verse.